The good thing is you're wrong, okay? <laughs> but your, your confidence is strong, mashallah. And we appreciate your confidence. I heard recently someone said that we know the difference between a genius and an idiot. You know the difference between a genius and an idiot? I don't know. Someone who's very smart, someone who's not very smart. What's the difference between the two? I'm going to tell you. They said a genius answers his question loud and proud, even if he's wrong. <laughs> And he whispers his but he whispers his answer even if he's right. He's here. No confidence in his knowledge. So alhamdulillah, the answer was not right. But we see, mashallah, that you have some ability to be genius. <laughs> confidence. May Allah bless you. So who, who wants to try and answer the correct answer? Um, the time was after Fajr, before sunrise. Before sunrise. It was a Monday. Monday. The month was April. The month is? Bar Rabbi al the um, the year of the elephant. The, the year of the year of the elephant, uh huh? That's all I got. 
The 20th? 21st. No, we said Monday. You already said Monday. You know what his name? The 12th. Now, the author at first, he says what? He says the 10th. At first, he says, I can't have much food. Then he asked you. He says, what's the most correct opinion? And what we said, we missed, we missed the narration from who? Ibn Abbas and Jabir, where they mentioned that the Prophet said someone was born on the 12th of the Bil Awwal. We say, Allah Ta'ala A'lam, that's the most correct opinion, the law of best. Either way, there's no special occurrence that happens on his birthday. So those five things we want you to know. He was born on, in the month of, in the year of the elephant, Yom Al-Fil, right? But the month of the, the year of the elephant. What was the year of the elephant? Why did they call it the year of the elephant? Anyone remember? Who tried to attack the Kaaba? What was his name? What was the name of the person who tried to attack the Kaaba? Allah humiliated him. Abraham. What did he try to attack the, uh, the, uh, the Kaaba with? Elephants. What did Allah destroy those elephants with? Birds. What type of birds? Big birds, little birds? Small ones. Had little little rocks in their feet. Not even big rocks. A lot of stories. Mm -hmm. So he was born in Yom Al-Fil, the year of the elephant, the month of Rabi al-Awwal, Monday, before Tulu al right? Tulu al before the sun rose, on the 12th. Now, what does that correspond to? What did that correspond to? The 20th of April. Of what year? The year of the elephant. Yes, the year of the elephant. But what year? Yes, it's correct. 507. So it's the 20th of the month of Nisan, which is April, the fourth month of the solar calendar. Right? وَقَبْلَهُ حَيْنُ أَبِيهِ حَانَ What is this line? What else happened? What is this line? وَقَبْلَهُ حَيْنُ أَبِيهُ أَبِيهِ حَانَ What does that mean? His father passed away when? After he was born? Right after he was born? When? Before he was born. No, he passed away before he was born. وَقَبْلَ مُحَيْنُ أَبِيهِ حَانًا Before he was born, his father passed away. وَبَعْدَ عَامِينِ غَدَى حُقِيمًا جَاءَتْ بِهِ مُوْضِعُهُ سَلِيمًا حَلِيمَةٌ لِأُمِّهِ وَعَادَتْ بِهِ لِأَهْلِهَا كَمَا أَرَادَتْ What is this one? What are we talking about here? The power of Allah. Yes. The power of Allah. That is correct answer. But this line here is talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi being breastfed where? Where did he breastfed at? In Medina? In the desert. Mecca? Where? In the desert. He was taken outside of Mecca. Why? Because of health reasons, right? He was taken outside of the city of Mecca to be breastfed by who? Halim or who? Halim and Sa'adiyah, right? How long was he breastfed with her for? Two years. Two years. Then what happened after two years? She, she took him back. She brought him back to her mother, his mother, and then he asked her. She asked her mother if he could stay with her for longer. Now that's where we're at right now. We have the situation that after Halima took her, took him back with her. Halima took the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam back with her. So what happened now is we have a nine. But after shahrain and shikafu dafihi, but after shahrain and shikafu dafihi. So after two months, after he returned, did anyone memorize this? No, no. Anyone memorize it? Anyone memorize it? Anyone memorize it? Anyone memorize it? Anyone memorize بعدها كثيرة الرسول أنظمة موجزة الرسول موليده في عام موليده موليده في عام موليده في عشر الفضيل ربيع الأول عام الفيل لكنما المكتوب الثاني عشره في 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 
يوم الاثنين طلوع فجره في يوم ووافق العشرين من نيسان وقبله حين أبيه حانا وبعد عامين غدا فطيمة جاءت به موضعه حليم جاءت به موضعه سليمة حليم حليمة حليمة لهم حليمة لأمها وعادت حليمة لأمهم حليمة لأمهم وعادت به لأهلها كما أرادت فبعد شهرين فبعد شهرين فبعد شهرين شقاق طب بعد شهرين شقاق طب منه وقيل بعد أربع بعد أربع من سنه وبعد سن معشة في الجاهي وفات أمه على الأبوان ما هو هذا الرعاة؟ طيب شرحه عسرة دي سلوان فبعد شهرين شقاق بطنه وقيل بعد أربع من سنه وبعد ست معشة من جاهي وفات أمه على الأبوان these two lines of poetry, inshallah. So the first line of poetry is a very important event in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَبَعْدَ بَطْنِهِ وَقِيلَ بَعْدَ أَرْبَعٍ مِنْ سِنِّهِ So, after two months, the, the line says, after two months, his stomach was split open. Yeah, when they're talking about his stomach, they're not just talking about his act, talking about his chest area, right? His front area of him was split open. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone heard about this before? Very important. You heard فبعد الشهرين شقاق بطنه وقيل بعد أربع من سنه. and some of the people they say it happened when he was four years old. some people say it happened when he was four years old. either way, two months after he went back to Halima, which is the most perfect thing Allah Taala Ala, a huge event happened in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu before he was even a prophet. before he was even a prophet. there comes a narration where the Prophet Sallallahu some companions, they said to the Prophet Sallallahu tell us about yourself. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Naam, and a da'wathu Abi Ibrahim, wa busra Abi Isa, wa ra'at ummi hina hamalat bi, annahu kharaja minha nurun adha'a lahu usur al-sham, wa sturudi'atu bi bani Sa'd ibn Bakr, fa bayna ana ma'a akhin li khalfa akhin li khalfa buyutina nar'a bahman lana, il atani wa dunani alayhima diya'un dhidun, فَبَصْتٍ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ مَمْنُوءٍ ثَلْجًا فَأَخَارَنِي فَشَقَّى بَطْنِي وَاسْتَخْرَجَا قَلْبِي فَشَقَّاهُ فَاسْتَخْرَجَا مِنْهُ عَلَقَةً سَوْدَاءً فَطَرَحَاهَا ثُمَّ غَسَلَا قَلْبِي وَبَطْنِي بِذَلِكَ الثَّلْجِ حَتَّى أَنْقَيَاهُ ثُمَّ أَحَدُهُمَا لِصَاحِبِهِ ثُمَّ أَحَدُهُمَا لِصَاحِبِهِ زِنْهُ بِعَصْمَةٍ مِنْ أُمَّتِهِ فَوَزَنَنِي بِهِمْ فوزنتهم ثم قال زنوا بمئة من أمتي فوزنني بهم فوزنتهم ثم قال زنوا بألف من أمتي فوزنني بهم فوزنتهم فقال دعت عنك والله لو وزنته بأمته لو زنها سبحان الله this is a very mashallah the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when they asked him his companions they asked him tell us something about yourself he told them Okay, I'll tell you something now. And a da'wah to Abi Ibrahim. I am the response to the da'wah of my father Ibrahim. And as well, I am the glad tidings of my brother Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Isa, you know, he told me that there's going to be busra ala kum. He said, I'm that, I am that glad tidings. Ahmed, that is me, right? And I'm the, 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 the response to the da'wah of Ibrahim. He said, my mother, when she was pregnant with me, she saw a light illuminating the castles of Sham. When she was pregnant with me, she saw a light coming from her, illuminating, meaning lighting up, a light like a flashlight, you know, but going far away, going to the castles of Sham. He said, I was breastfed, suckled in the house of Ben Sa'id ibn Bekr. One time, my brother, my brother he's talking about here is a brother from breastfeeding, that he was there breastfeeding with, what they call like a, a, a milk brother or something like this, right? He said, one time my brother and my, me and my brother, we were playing, we were playing behind a house tended to some sheep. When two men wearing white clothes came to us with a gold basin filled with ice. They came with a bucket, you know, like a bucket, a gold bucket or a canister filled with ice. And they grabbed me and cut open my stomach and took out my heart. So we know, of course, the stomach is not with the heart is in there. Right? The heart is the chest in it. So they use the word bucket to refer to, you know, this front area this front inner cavity. 
So he said, they cut me open and took out my heart. They cut open my heart. But after they cut open his, his stomach and took out his heart, so long as them, then they also cut his heart open, so long as sudden. And they took out a black blood clot and threw it away. Then they washed my heart and stomach with the ice until it was clean. Small fatty, but we learned that some of the things that you can use to make wudu from is ice, clean. Right? If you melt it, you can use it. Right? Clean? Ice? Then one of them said to the other, balance him with 10 people from his home. Like, weigh him with 10 people from his home. Of course, the prophet said to them, so he made the equivalent to them. Then he said, balance him with 100 people from his home. Of. And the other one made the equivalent to them. You know, that, you know, every time they added more people, the Prophet Sallallahu still weighed the same much as them to show you the weight of the Prophet Sallallahu If we want to know how great our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, think about what they're saying here. They weighed him with 10 people from this ummah. We think that we're great people, right? That's why we think they're good guy, right? MashaAllah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, they weighed him with 10 people. He still was equal. Weighed him with 100, he still was equal. Weighed him with 1,000 people from this ummah. And he still was equal. Then they said, leave him because if we weighed him with his whole ummah, then he still will be equal to us. This is our messenger, Sallallahu This is why he is the greatest person to follow ever. We have an opportunity to follow someone that's greater than, think how big the ummah of Islam is. You know, billions of people that become Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu work is worth more than that. That's why we love him. We protect his honor. We say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time we hear his name so that we don't become a bankrupt person, a cheap person, right? When you hear his name, what should you say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you hear his name, what should you say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we're going to bring you the benefit. Look at the benefit we get here of studying the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we get the opportunity to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So we should do what? That's one of the benefits of scholars of hadith. They take. And this is why they say they have a problem over all of the other scholars of different sciences. It's because of this small fact that every time they're reading a hadith, they get to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What kind of a difference is this? this? You know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet said, Whoever sent Salah upon me one time, Allah will send Salah upon him ten times. So every time we're reading the seerah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't be cheap. Right? When you hear it, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that you get this reward of Allah sending salah upon you. Ten times for every one time you say salah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he deserves it from us. So we learn from this story here the first time that this happened to the Prophet. What happened? That his heart, his chest was cut open, right? And his heart was taken out. And then out of his heart was taken a black spot. And another narration said that Jibril, he said that when they took it out, he said, that is the portion of shaitan that was inside of you. Now it's gone. What about us? That portion might be huge for Allah protected, but it's still in there. Destroying us. And we got to make it step off. The Prophet said, Son of that portion was taken out of him. He still made it step far more than a hundred times a day. Look at us. I don't love the scheme. Right? Here we are. And we think that, you know, we survived. We're the best ever. The Prophet said, Son had the portion of the, that the shaitan with, you know, that was inside of his heart taken out. Another small benefit we learned from here is that what? How easy it is for the shaitan to travel through us. That each one of us have a portion of shaitan inside of us that he uses to come whisper to us in our hearts, that we have to pay attention to. That we have to pay attention to because we don't want that to become big and overtake us and control our heart and become, our heart become black. So we make a lot of this still fall. So this was the what? First time that his chest was cut open. What is confirmed about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that his chest was cut open how many times? How many times? Three times. Three times. The Prophet وسلم, his chest was cut open three times. Showing you the greatness also of his mission. And this cutting open, let me tell you something. This is realistic. This is not like um, some spiritual ooey wooey stuff, right? This really happened. 
How do we know it really happened? And another narration, Anderson and Malik. Who was Anderson and Malik? Do you know who Anderson and Malik was? Anderson and Malik. Call him in the visa or something, right? He was a servant of the Prophet. So he served the Prophet Sallallahu for more than almost 10 years. He served him. His mother brought him. The Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina. She brought him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Yala, this is a smart young man. Let him serve you. So he served the Prophet. So he was able to see certain things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that other people were not able to see. Do you know what he said? He said, I was able to still see the lines of the scar of this from the needle on the chest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is in Medina. 13 or uh, 20 something years after, or no, excuse me, more than this. 40, 50 years after this happened. If Anderson Maddox said, I was still able to see the lines of the scar of this happening to the prophet's like son on his chest. Again, to show you this, this was not like some, you know, some people might try to think this is like some wooey wooey stuff, right? But this really happened. That the, the brother of his that was with him. When he saw the two angels come and cut open the Prophet Sallallahu he ran to get help. And he said, they killed Muhammad. Oh my Allah, they killed Muhammad. It's really happened. Like, we have to increase our iman. So like, when we hear these type of stories, it should make you shiver. Like, my Allah, the reality of this. That, the Prophet Sallallahu heart was actually cut open. His chest was cut open. And his heart was cut open. His black spot was taken out. That his brother from milk was went running to say, okay, oh, they killed Muhammad. And when the adults came running back, they saw him sitting there looking a little sick, but he was alive. And his color was paler. Like, you know, it was the blood rushing, you know, it wasn't rushing through him the same way. This is a real event. Now I'm going to ask you people of 2020. I'm going to ask you people of 2020. How much do you think of the qutra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you think about the ability of Allah? When we see today that a regular human being can go and have open heart surgery and be up sitting up after. You know open heart surgery? You ever see someone have open heart surgery? No. No? Okay. I'll tell you, I've seen people that have had open heart surgery. They'll have surgery in the morning and they'll be up talking to you later on in the day. Their chest closed up, right? Closed up. They just had open heart surgery. Their chest was opened up, cracked open, and they're up talking to you later. They can't sit up all the way, they're talking to you. And they, that's just with the technological advancements of us human beings. So what do you think about Allah and subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, a, big, a small benefit. The Sahaba believed in this event without ever seeing anyone that happened to someone, being able to happen to someone. Us today, we know that this is easily possible. Should our iman not be increased in this? Should we not have stronger iman by hearing these types of stories? That subhanAllah, the Sahaba, they believed in it. 1,400 years ago, that was impossible. You open your chest back and you were dead. Right? They came and they washed his heart with ice, showing the purity of ice water, right? Especially if it came down from the sky, that is just, that comes down from the sky, it's pure. So the Prophet said something, he was washed and his heart was cleansed like this. So this was the first time when he was how old? Back to Shahrain, she called Two and two months. Right? Two and two months. A little older, right? And some people say four months, four years. So you have to four years old? For two years and two months. Now, the second time that the Prophet saw selling his heart, his chest was cut open, was when? Who knows when? Um, when he was like 10 years old? No, go ahead, let me answer. Let me answer. What, do you, what do you think it was? Uh, 12. You raise your hand? What, what do you think? 12. So, okay, next time I'll give you an answer, inshallah. When do you think, 12? Mm -hmm. No. So the next time that he, his chest was cut open was when he saw Allah alayhi wa sallam, before he received the message. Right before he received the message, his heart was cut open again. Why? So that he could be strong enough to receive this heavy message. Right? Mm -hmm. This is not an easy thing. 
Why do you think it's so hard? So how many people to hold on to the Quran and live by it every second of their day, right? Hearts are not clean enough. The heart is filthy. If the heart is clean, we will live by the Quran every moment of our day because the Quran makes sense and it's pure, but it's only pure and makes sense to the pure heart. If the heart is filthy, you can't understand the Quran properly. You don't think it makes sense. Why? Why did Allah tell me to do this? Why is it so difficult to do this? What? If the heart is clean, then it's easy. May Allah grant us to have clean, pure hearts. So the Prophet said his heart was cleansed again before he received the message so that he would be able to handle it and receive it. When was the third time that his heart was opened up? Another big event. What did you say? Tell him the line when someone's about to be tuned in. He is. 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 He He was going for the not the Israel itself, but the Israel itself. There's a difference between Israel and the Israel, right? You know what the difference is between Israel and the Israel? What's the difference between the Israel and the Israel? Not from Medina, from Mecca to Jerusalem, right? And the Israel is going up. The Israel is going up. So Israel was just to go talk to the other prophets and lead the prophets in prayer and meet them. That's a big event. But the Mi'raj, he went to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before the Mi'raj, his heart was cleaned again. Why? He's going to meet Allah. It's a big deal. You can't just meet Allah, you know? You've got to get prepped for that. Just like for us, when we think about this, subhanAllah, before we stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our munajah with Allah in this dunya, the Prophet went directly to the heavens to have munajah, a private conversation with Allah. We have this munaj with Allah five times a day or more. So what do we do before it every time? We have to make wudu, clean ourselves, prep yourself for it. You can't stand in front of Allah just, you know, regularly. So you got to prep yourself, make wudu, cleanse yourself, think about what you're doing, let the sins run off of your body, right? So that then you can stand in front of Allah. And that shows you the, the hate act that you should be thinking about, the condition that you should be in. When you think about the fact that I'm going to stand in front of Allah, I'm not going to go talk to, you know, this person or that. I'm going to stand in front of Allah. So the Prophet said, him again, his chest was cut open and his heart taken out and cleansed for a third time before he went and met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heaven. So how many times was his chest opened up? Three. When? Tell me the first time. After two months coming back with Halima, right? When was the second time? Before he received the revelation, when was the third time? When he went to go and speak to Allah in the Mi'raj, right? Now, that's that part right there. That's all talking about his chest being split open and his heart being clean. Now, the next, the next event that we're going to take, and that's the final one for today, that after six years, when he was six years old, he was six with one more month. That he was six, six years plus one month. So he was like six years and one month. He means with one more coming month. That's the Ma'ashahri. One more month added to six years. His mother, وسلم, his mother passed away at a place called Al Abwa. A place called Al Abwa. This happened when his mother took him to go visit his uncles from Bama Najab in Medina. On the way back, coming from Medina, his mother got sick. And she passed away in a place called Al Abwa. This place is between Mecca and Medina, but it's closer to Medina. I'll tell you the distance between Mecca and Medina 
For us today, it's about five hours in the car. So you talk about them riding a camel or sometimes walking. It's a nice distance. It's a long, it's a distance, it's just a desert. You know, it's not like, you know, now they have some little road stops and stuff on the way, and you're happy when you get to the little road stop, but it's a distance, just straight desert. And she passed away in a place called El Abuat, on the path there. There is a nice benefit also in the story of the passing of the Prophet Sallallahu mother, that one time the Prophet Sallallahu he went to go visit the grave of his mother. He says, Qarasu ma'an Nabi, one, one companion, he mentioned, Qarasu ma'an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hatta idha kunna biwaddaan, qala makanu فقال إني أتيت قبر أم محمد فسألت ربي الشفاعة فمنع عليها وإني كنت نهيتكم عن زيارة القبور فزروها فبعض سلم in another narration he said استأذنت ربي أن أن أستغفر لها فلم يؤذن لي فبعض سلم one time was going out with his companions and on the way to where he was going he told his companion to stay right here for a while. And then he went off. And then when he came back, he said he came back to Hilo. And Hilo literally means heavy. But it doesn't mean that he became bigger. It means that now, you know how he said that he, he has a lot on his mind. He came back, you know, wearing the, you know, his, he, he was heavy down with, you know, sort of grief. And they asked him, you know, what happened? He said that, you know, I asked my Lord, look at this, subhanAllah. And this is something that we know for sure that our Prophet وسلم, was a prophet. Nothing besides that. He wasn't something to be worshipped. He came to send the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Right? He wasn't a god. He had no special godlike powers. He wasn't able to make something halal that Allah did not tell him was halal. He could not make something haram that Allah didn't tell him was haram. He was a prophet and he conveyed his message. Right? That's the message. It. That Allah said that I did not send from before you any message except that I was revealed to them what? That there is nothing that deserves to be worshipped except for me, Allah. And a fa'budun. Or another minute, another kira fa'buduni to worship me. That's it. It's the tawheed of our message. All of our deen revolves around Tawheed. And we see this, that the Prophet Sallallahu he asked Allah for permission to be able to what? Make shafa'ah, ask for forgiveness for his mother, who died as a kafir. His mother, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, died as a kafir. So he went to ask Allah, you know, can I have permission to ask forgiveness for her? To make intercession for her? And he said that Allah forbade him from that. Allah didn't give him permission for that. Allah didn't give him permission for that. Some of us benefit, subhanAllah, the reality of Islam and Iman. That how important it is for us to try our best to die upon Iman and Islam. Because the Prophet Sallallahu the greatest man that ever lived, was not able to beg Allah to forgive his mother. So what about us if we don't die upon Islam? Who can save us? Who can save you if you don't die upon Islam? So we have to take this deen serious. We have to take our Islam serious and not want to give it up for anything. The Prophet asked Allah to beg, beg Allah, can I ask for forgiveness for my mother? He was forbidden that. He was forbidden that. That reminds you that when you die, the person who dies upon a ship, if they can't, regardless who they are, is genuine. So then, the Prophet said, he said also here that I used to forbid you from going to visit the graves, but now I permit you, so visit the graves reminds you of death. So it's good, you know, we have an opportunity to go and go. visit the graves, make do out for the people in the graves, not asking them to make do out. Their time is over. So you go there, you make do out for them, <clears throat> and not do out to them. Okay? And that's where we end for today, inshallah. هذا وصلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك هل هناك سؤال؟ طيب جزاكم الله خيرا